Welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Here we interview successful people who are living a life filled with adventure, excitement and fun. Learn where they're being. Explore where they are going. See what gets them out of bed in the morning. Find out what drives them. We will go through their lowest points and we will look at the opportunities and possibilities that are now presenting to them. Come on a journey of ignition. I'm your host, Leanne Blaney. For more information, go to ignitepodcast.com. Let's ignite. Joe Frester has a Diploma of Professional Counselling, a Certificate in Metaphysics and uses yoga practice to steal herself and to practice mindfulness. She is passionate about the disconnection between our body and spirit and the need to heal that within ourself. Jo has worked with eating disorders for a number of years and is currently re-establishing her business on the Sunshine Coast as a counsellor. Her experience with eating issues has taught her that our eating style is an attempt to tell us something important about how we are living our life. Eating disorders are not about food, it is a sign that we are out of alignment with ourselves. This struggle of conflict and difficulties is the message to stop and listen to the deepest and wisest part of ourself, of what we need to do to reconnect to our body and spirit so that we can feel whole. Hi Jo, welcome to the Ignite Your Life podcast. Hello, nice to speak to you. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm really excited to share your story. So shall we get started? Absolutely. So where are you actually now? Tell us about what's actually happening for you right now. Um, right now I'm living in the Sunshine Coast um, in Queensland. Um, I present in my life, when I say present, I'm living what I call a really just simple life. I... Um, have a good balance of friends and family. I have a mentor. I still try and challenge myself and have ventures and hobbies. The people in my life, my friends, my husband, my family are the, you know, the forefront of my life. But as I said, I really just say I live a really simple life and just take it as it comes to some degree. Yeah, I love that. So tell us about where you've been. What's your story to get to this point? Um, it's always interesting when somebody goes, what's your story? Because Stories to me fascinate everybody's life fascinates me. But I go, where do I start? So you know, like I was born in North Queensland on the middle child of three children. But the main things for me, the things that I would probably want people to know, um, I actually got married quite young. I was twenty one when I first married and um, I was fairy tale person. I'm gonna be married happily ever after forever. And I was married for two years, and that's when I was hospitalised twice during that time for an eating disorder. And so that was like a really big thing, which is a part of my whole journey, which is a story that I really think needs, for me, that I probably want to tell this, this story. And um, I left that marriage um, in, within two years, and then I moved to Brisbane and remarried at 29, and I was actually really happily married. But really weirdly, this continual discontentment that I just carried within me just continued. Um, and I left my husband for <laughs> marriage, um, which opened a door for me, which I then went and studied counselling um, and um, metaphysics because that um, body, soul, mind connection was something that always fascinated me. It resonated with me on a really deep level. Um, I went and then I had the opportunity, I went and worked with women with eating disorders um, in groups and all of so I did one-on-one -on -one counselling. Um, it was something that I felt alive in doing this. I felt alive because it was something I could do and share my lived experience. Um, I remarried third time <laughs> at 40. It's a story that I don't like telling people, but it is really part of the whole journey. Um, my husband and I moved to Brisbane and we were living in Brisbane and I had a, um, a council practice out of my home office. And again, I say this nagging disconnectedness within me just remained. It was just phenomenal. Um, um, my husband and I then moved to North Queensland where I continued doing counselling, but it was more telephone counselling with my Brisbane clients. And um, then we had this amazing opportunity. We went driving around Europe in 2009 for three months. And then in 2010, we moved to Melbourne. <laughs> it's like 
running, running, running. I love it. And because um, my husband's mum had Alzheimer's disease, so she got quite ill. And so we were there during that time. Um, and from that part of the story, it was, um, again, still this disconnect contentment. Um, my husband had the opportunity to then, we all got transferred actually to Bunbury and WA and I thought, wow, yes, here we go again. I love it. The adventures of life. You just don't know where it's going to take you and it's always this amazing things that just keep unfolding that just fascinates me about life. Um, and again, I keep saying that rumbling discontentment. So, and that's probably um, that's probably the thing is that rumbling discontentment. Discontentment. That's a real story for me. I think. Yeah. So, when you had your different tipping points for change, was it because of that slow rumble just coming up, and then thinking, okay, no, I'm not happy. It's time to move on. Some of them were genuine opportunities, and so which with each opportunity, I couldn't pass it up sometimes and you know as I said to move to WA oh yeah this is exciting so that was a rumbling discontentment the opportunity to go to Melbourne it, it was because of his mother genuinely so there's, but it's like oh yes this is all exciting which is I say about life it just does that amazing twist and turn that you can't you, you know you can't go oh well I imagined this is going to happen in this year of my life it just isn't like that at all Mm. So when you've had these different sort of changes in your life, have you had challenges along the way as well where you thought, well, I just don't feel like going ahead with business or with your life and things like that would make you throw in the towel? Oh, absolutely. It's, um, as the, the biggest tipping point for me, and as I said, as you said, about the rumbling, but the biggest tipping point was when I just knew that I, I was doing all these things in life and I was really to some degree, reinventing myself. Um, so we move and um, this is all amazing. And um, But it, as I said, it's just that rumbling discontentment that just you just know there's something wrong, there's something going to change. And, the um, you know, you do, you go, why am I just, what is the point of this? It's like just getting out of bed some days, you go, why, why? It, it, is it going to be another day that you have that? And um, my dad um, was diagnosed with lung cancer last year and he died seven months later and I was wondering what was the point of me looking inside myself? What was the point of this questioning, questioning, questioning? What was the point? You know, there's so many more important things in life and people and things to do. Um, and I just, you know, question whether I could continually keep seeking to find peace for that discontentment. Um, but, you know, with that getting sick, it was like all hands on deck. It was, it was um, you know, life changes. You do literally live in the moment. And, um, but, and this is probably the thing that changed everything for me to some degree. <laughs> um, Dad had this divine spark. And I call it that because he just um, had a piece of the everyday. He never understood my inability to have this piece. Because you know, he looked at my life going, you're doing this, you're doing that, you're doing the other. And he just had this innate sense of life was wonderful and he was just happy and joyful and he could find beauty and happiness in the, the ordinary. And that's what made him so extraordinary. Extraordinary as a person. He was just amazing, amazing man. I just so lucky to have even known him. So yeah. So with um putting one foot in front of the other, you've had like a few challenges and you had a few changes in direction. And what is it that keeps you going? Is that search for something that'll give you contentment and to live every day? And that's the thing, it's that it's literally now for me, it's that to find that sense of yourself. And that's and that's the thing with the what I work with eating disorders. 
that's just the symptom. It's the underlying, underlying discontentment within yourself that you need to find the peace, that spark within yourself, that, that wonder within yourself. You can do amazing things in life. You can climb mountains. You can, you can surf and seek and do lots and lots of things. And I'm still doing lots and lots of amazing things. It's the peace. It's what my father knew. What my father used to look at me and go, how come you don't have that? <laughs> how come you do? Um, and it's that. It's that that I realise is every the uniqueness, I say the uniqueness of every human being. We all have it. Every single human being has it. We have to just find it. And it, as simple as it sounds, is you stop, you breathe, you take in, you, which is why I now can say my life feels very ordinary because I was seeking the extraordinary in the, the big things instead of literally in the everydayness or just the every momentness, literally. Yeah. It takes courage, doesn't it, to look inward because quite often we'll be looking outside of ourselves. Oh, I'm not content with my life. There's something missing. And we're looking outside, outside, outside. But just to take that courage and stop for a moment and look inward, that's the key, isn't it, to get peace? Absolutely. And that, I actually did um, write a story for the um, Thousand Ripple Effect, and it was about that in choosing me. I choose me. It's about that your own divineness, basically, and that, that you choose yourself. Absolutely. Yeah. The Thousand Ripples Effect um, project is huge, isn't it? It's so important to give these messages to our younger generation, just, you know, because we've all had different experiences and being authors and getting a thousand of them together with all that experience combined and the different messages we can give. It's a, it's a powerful project, isn't it? Absolutely. It's, it's, I, and that's my, my, um, that was my desire for doing it. It was, that to, to tell mental people, tell people that your story is really, who you are is so important to, and because of my story, I, I've done lots of things to find that peace within yourself. Don't give up. Don't, don't give up. Yeah. So what new possibilities have opened up for you that now that you're living this simpler life? I'm really lucky that, um, that I've done all these amazing things. So, you know, as I said, that I'm willing now to mentor, that I actually um, am just available just to be there for people. Life is, as I said, it presents as it does. You know, being able to be here while my dad was sick was an amazing experience. The fact that Rod and I, my husband and I, went back to um, Melbourne when his mum was sick, these are things that can never be taken away from you. It's it's something you have forever and ever. To, to, and those opportunities to open up, sometimes we just, they're just there and sometimes we make them happen. And um, it's, it's, it's just the courage to change your life, to pack up and do these things and to change your job or change your business or give up your business and all those things that you do. Um, and the twists and turns of life can be scary they can be but that's what makes it interesting as well mm, mm, so true so what's the most exciting thing you're looking forward to in the future my most exciting thing is our next my husband and i've got a in the next couple of months we're going to um germany and spain my husband's on a project of doing his family tree which was which was an interesting thing i never perceived see i never perceived that so off we go to germany to his um He's got a um, cousin over there that we're going to meet up with and go to um, where his family's from and, and things like that. So that's really exciting. And, um, again, that I'm wanting to mentor is really probably my next exciting thing that I'm being more open to that for people that, that I'm willing to just be available. So that's my exciting thing. Yeah, it definitely sounds exciting. All right, let's have a change in pace and do the speed round. Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> What's your favourite book? Um, it Was Girl on a Train by Paula Hawkins. Oh, okay. That's an interesting one. That was made into a movie, wasn't it? Yeah, 
the movie was completely different to the book to some degree. I mean, the idea of it, because I always think books and movies are quite often different. Mm. But um, I just like the twist. Uh, there you go, the twist and turn. I'm seeing a theme. <laughs> Who's a mentor figure that's helped you the most? Um, my main mentor would be um, Mary Lappin. She's my counselling supervisor. She's been in my life for 25 years. She's just stunning and amazing. And she's she's a person that basically says never give up on what matters most and that's being who you are. Mm. What daily ritual works best for you? Um, my daily, daily ritual is literally now I go, I walk, I do yoga, and sitting still, literally meditating is, is something that I wonder for me because um, it's the stillness. It's in the stillness that you find the peace. Yeah. Do you have a favourite food? My favourite food, would you believe, is pizza. Oh, I do believe. I'm the same. <laughs> I think who can not like pizza? I know. <laughs> do you like living in the country or the city? Um, I'm actually a beach girl, but, um, you know, if you're doing country, city, definitely city. I like the diversity of the cities. Yeah. What's your biggest piece of advice to give to others to help them make change in their life? Seek, seek the help you need, basically. If you, if there's any doubt you're having, if, like, I come back to where, like I said, my slow rumbling and... You need to seek help. You need, I think you need guidance. You need someone to show you the path sometimes. Um, or that you can stay on a path or that you're on a path. Um, so, yeah, seeking. Don't be afraid to ask for help. Yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? Because often when we do have uh, issues or challenges and that we tend to go inward and stay, you know, try to stay strong, I suppose, but it's a bit of a misnomer that we need to get that support from other people and open up. The honesty of it, and that's mm. why um, that's that's the story I want to share. The honesty of it is that, um, you know, yes, getting out of bed for some of us is really difficult. If you have depression, which I had a history of, which is the reason for the underlying um, sadness, unhappiness, it's you need help, you really do. You, so this is the thing, don't be afraid to ask for help. And the honesty of it, for me to be honest about that is something I'd rather have kept a secret. Being married three times is something I'd rather keep a secret. <laughs> but, but it's a part of the story. It's a wholly big part of the story. I got discontent. So that's the thing, yeah. Yeah, great advice. All right, last question. If you had a time machine, what would you go back and do differently or tell your former self? Oh, this one's an easy one. I thought it was hard when I saw the question. I would get my nanny and and my dad to teach me Italian when I was a child. I had this great opportunity that just has passed me by. So that would that's like a regret. All right. Well, thank you so much for your valuable time today, Joe, and sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. Would you like to give us the best place to contact you? And we'll end it there. Okay, thank you, Leanne. Um, the best place to contact me is I'm actually going to speak out my mobile because as I said, I'll take calls and I'll, as I said, if that somebody wants um, mentoring or just to talk to me, that's fine. Um, it's 0418-716-047. And my email address is quite simple. It's Joe Presta, which is J-O-F-R-E-S-T-A at hotmail.com. They're my best contact. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. Igniters, Jo lives a simple life. She's realised that her continual rumbling discontentment most of her life has come from the need to find peace within herself. If you want to contact Jo, email her on joefrester at hotmail.com. If you want to have more balance in your life to be able to handle whatever comes your way, go to my website, leanneblaney.com.